I don't do a lot of projects on this channel because our focus here is on the workshop itself, but occasionally I do. And a little more than seven years ago, I made a little weekend woodworking project video for this. It's a wooden safe complete with a dial and a combination. It's been sitting around ever since, and every time I look at it, I have a laugh because I remember some of the comments that I got on the original video. Most people understood its purpose. It's a novelty. But as tends to happen on YouTube, some people assumed that I was trying to teach people how to build a bank vault, and I got complaints about how that the combination couldn't be changed later on, so that isn't very secure, or how easy it would be to break into it if you had a saw or an ax. At least one guy, I think maybe two, called me out because he said a wooden safe isn't fireproof enough. <laughs> I suppose it could have been worse. I could have had a big YouTube channel make three long videos complaining about how it's a bad place to store oily rags. But it was a really popular project because it's a lot of fun to build and it makes a great gift. I got the idea a long time ago from an old woodworking magazine, but for the life of me, I can't remember which one. If you remember where it was, I thought it was in Wood Magazine, but I don't know. Leave it in the comments below. Now that original video had some music in the background, which people didn't like, and there were a few updates that I wanted to make. So I'm gonna present the build again here, step by step with those updates, just in case you wanna build a wooden safe of your own, and I really recommend it. It's a fun project. So let's get started. The depth of your safe is determined by the width of your boards. My boards were nine inches. If you want a deeper safe, just use wider boards. The side panels are nine and a half inches tall. The top and the bottom panels are seven inches wide. Now I used an adjustable finger joint that I made for my table saw sled. Some years back I designed this crosscut sled with a set of attachment jigs for cutting finger joints and tenons, splines, even dovetails. It's definitely the most feature packed sled around. If you want to build one, use the link below this video to get your set of plans. Now you may notice I made my fingers a little proud. When it's dry, I'll sand them flush and smooth. This is a great way to get a really nice finger joint assembly. Next, measure the inside of the box. Cut a back panel that fits right inside and glue it in place. Then cut out another piece, but this one has to be a 16th of an inch shorter than the box's inner height and a quarter inch wider than the box's inner width. That's gonna be your door, and you heard me right. I said to make it a quarter inch wider than the box's inner width. That's to account for the saw curves when you rip that door into three pieces. The left piece should be one and three quarters of an inch wide, the center should be two and five eighths of an inch wide, and the right piece should be around an inch and a half. If it's a little wider than that, we'll trim it to final size later. The reason why we made a door panel as a single piece and then cut it into three pieces is because you're going to glue it back together eventually and you'll want it to look like a single piece again with continuous wood grain. Now, take the center piece and cut it into two pieces, measuring three and five eighths of an inch down from each end. Discard whatever remains in the middle. Next, measure from the left edge of the lower piece five eighths of an inch then a quarter inch, then five eighths, another quarter, another five eighths, and you should be left with a final quarter. Carry those lines down the face three eighths of an inch from the end. You'll have to cut away these wider portions, leaving the narrow tabs between them. Here's the layout again if you missed it. Here's what it looks like after I cut the waist away with the bandsaw. You'll also notice that the upper half of the door's centerpiece got a similar treatment. So now the two are mirror images of each other. Now we turn our attention back to the outer pieces of the door panel. I'm using a center finding ruler to locate the center points of the inner edges. I'll put a link to one of these inexpensive but super handy rulers below this video. Just for clarification, I marked the center points of these two edges. Be sure to keep track of the orientation of all these pieces so you can get them back together in their proper order later. A drill press is the best tool to bore half inch holes at each of those two marked center points. On the narrow of the two pieces, the one that goes on the left of the door, the hole should be one inch deep. On the other piece, the one on the right of the door, 
The hole should go all the way through. Make sure you carefully locate these holes. They have to line up later. I don't care how you cut them out, but you'll need three inch and a quarter diameter circles made from half inch thick material. I used a bandsaw to rough mine out and then a disc sander to finish rounding them down to my compass line and their final size. Now I use the dimple left by the compass to strike a line from the center to a point three eighths of an inch off center. Do this on all three discs. Then bore a quarter inch hole through each disc at your offset points. I suggest using a clamp to hold them safely as you work. Next, bore a half inch hole in the center. You should be left with a large hole with a little quarter inch hole beside it creating kind of a notch. Use a chisel to clean up the waste between the two. Repeat this process on each of the three discs. Now remember the right side of the door assembly, the one with the hole in the edge that went all the way through? Find its center on the face from top to bottom and scribe a line through. Bisect that line and mark points a half of an inch from either side. Use a quarter inch bit to bore holes at these three points and down into the larger hole beneath. As I turn the workpiece, you can see what I mean. Use a chisel to remove the waste and create a slot. Now the door parts can be glued back together, starting with the left piece with its edge hole facing inward. The two center pieces align to the top and bottom of that left strip. And finally, the right piece is glued in place with its slot facing upward. Next, I divided my discs into six equal parts, and I used a stamp to emboss numbers along the edges. You can write them on if you prefer. This is when you have to choose your combination. Each digit that you want as part of the combination must be positioned opposite the little notch in the center of the wheel. That would place it on this edge. Once the door is dry, slide a half inch dowel as deeply into the hole as you can. Use a pencil to mark the location of each tab on the dowel. Then mark the left end of the slot. Finally, mark the edge so you know where to trim the dowel to its final length. After you've trimmed it, bore three quarter inch holes right between the tab locations that you marked. Be sure the holes are all in line with each other and that they do not pass all the way through the dowel. Find the point you marked at the left end of the slot and carry it around to the opposite side of the dowel. Bore another quarter inch hole there, almost all the way through. I also like to chamfer the ends of the dowel so it won't get caught during operation. Put a drop of glue in each pinhole, not too much, you don't want it to squeeze out. Then slide it in place, slipping it through the center of each disc. Insert quarter inch wooden pins into each hole. These should be just long enough so that they stick out of their holes about 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch. Line up the wheel so you can slide the pins into the notches. Then twist the dowel and the wheels 180 degrees until the remaining pinhole appears in the door slot. Insert a final pin there to use as a handle. Now you can see how the door works. When the dials rotate to align the notches in the back of the door, the bolt can be moved from the front side of the door. If the pins pass through those notches unobstructed, the bolt can move and the door can open. I use some mortise free hinges to attach my door. You may have to trim its width a little bit to get it to fully close. The final step is to bore a half inch hole in the side of the box for the bolt to slip into. Now ideally, this could have been done before the box was assembled, but I just wasn't confident that it would properly align with the bolt once everything was together and the hinges were mounted. So I took measurements and drilled my hole in the side of the box after assembly. You could plug that later if you want, but I really don't think it looks bad at all. And that's all there is to it. I intended to give mine away, but here it is seven years later and it's still kicking around the shop. Now, do you want to see something even more interesting than a wooden safe? Who says you can't get track saw quality cuts from a simple circular saw? Bora Tools new clamp edge guide system is light, it's easily portable, and it's far less expensive. And with the optional router and jigsaw attachments, the system's more versatile too. Check it out at the link in the notes below this video.